one of those areas in your business that you can go and bring value to your client that's more than just the service you provide what's up guys my name is shane aka the electric lawn care guy i'm a certified horticulturist industry professional of 13 years and i've been running electric equipment since 2015. Come join my show where I go over all the ins and outs of an electric lawn care business, from equipment reviews, interviews with other industry professionals, advertising tactics, and so much more. Hit the subscribe button, tap that bell, and let's start living the green life. Thanks for tuning in to the first episode of The Daily Grind. This series will cover everything related to running an electric lawn care service. From tactics I use in my own business to grow and keep my clients happy, to the daily hustle of learning how to scale and automate an electric lawn care business. What's up guys? So just got done gassing up. We're heading to our first stop here. This is some of the yards we're gonna be coming up on today. Uh, they probably are gonna have frost on them. If they do, we're not gonna be mowing them. Most of these shouldn't need to be mowed. Um, we work on a year round service schedule. So during this time of year, we typically mow the yards about once a month. And the other visits that we're coming by, we still allocate the same amount of service hours to, um, to each visit. So we'll go through and we'll edge, we'll blow. If weeds need to be sprayed, we'll go ahead and take care of those. We'll do some weed pulling. We'll do leaf cleanup up to the amount of budgeted hours that we have for that job. If they want more done outside of that, then we have to charge them an additional service fee. So um, we still try to figure out a way to bring value to our clients during this off season since we typically charge on a contract basis and year round. So since we're not mowing, you still wanna make sure that you're bringing value to your client. And you can do this even like outside of the normal service visit. And this is something we actually did, or I started doing last season, is that after every job is completed that our customers get an automated text message saying, hey, you know, your green team's been by, your home's been serviced, you know, for this week, we'll see you next week. But what I would include with that generalized message was, basically inspirational quotes things to encourage people to have a good day maybe share some insight to create a positive perspective but it's it's one of those areas in your business that you can go and bring value to your client that's more than just this service you provide so uh, that's something I really enjoyed doing. It was fun. It, uh, it, it was a lot of work to keep up with, especially during the summertime, remembering to update that text message. We, we use Service Autopilot for everything, so there's an automation in there that anytime a job's marked as completed, you can have a message sent to your customers um, and you can customize that message. You just have to go in there and remember to pull up that automation and edit the details so that way you can make that text message say whatever you want. I've even used it to let people know that we came by but also that, that we had a service update for them via YouTube and all they had to do was copy and paste the link. So just something to think about that you might want to try to uh, bring into your business coming into 2022 and the spring season, little details like that really go a long way. A lot of our customers really enjoyed those messages and uh, we're gonna be doing it again this year. So uh, just something I'd recommend do. It's uh, one of those little details, but it makes a big difference. So uh, we just got to the first stop here, or I did. I'm working by myself today. And uh, I'm gonna go get this yard cleaned up, probably just an edge and blow. And um, I'll check out the weeds and see if they have weeds. They don't have any hedges here, so um, it should be a pretty, pretty basic in and out service. We'll mark this job as complete and move on to the next one.
So I have to let everybody know, we actually don't use electric blowers right now. We're going to be implementing those in our new mowing setup that we launched in 2022. But previously, we haven't been using them because there hasn't been a blower on the market that's actually been adequate for commercial use. Since we do both commercial and residential, we've had to set up our trucks in a way that can accommodate both types of clients. Going into 2022 and this spring season, we're actually going to have a dedicated residential service truck, which we're going to go ahead and have a full electric setup on, and that will include the use of electric backpack blowers. We're actually going to be using the Makita blower. Uh, it has uh, right around 630 CFM, which is like your entry level uh, commercial performance uh, when it comes to the blower. So if you look at like the Still Series, like the BR600s right around there, they're going to have a pretty similar C um, CFM on those blowers. So we're going to put those on our new trucks. And then starting in the springtime, you'll start to see some videos of us using these electric blowers and um, how they perform on our jobs. All right, so that one for us, uh, that particular client is only signed up for mowing services. Uh, I did go ahead and spray their weeds, uh, I think about three weeks ago, just uh, with something a little extra to help make their yard look a little better during the off season. Uh, but overall, this upcoming season and really what we're going to be working towards and marketing towards are more yards that are about that size. Um, granted, you couldn't see the backyard in that, but we're aiming for properties that are on average around 3,000 to 3,500 square feet is ideal because we're going to be using smaller mowers, 30 inch X mark mowers. Um, we're going to be converting those over to propane until they come out with a reliable electric mower uh, that's a 30 inch and we'll go ahead and just swap those mowers out. So I'm trying to position us in a way to where we already have the business model and is functioning and running, running off of using 30 inch mowers and focusing more on just small residential lots. Uh, so that way, when those products do become available, I know the production rates are good, the labor hours are good, we're making what we need to, and then all I have to do is simply just swap the mowers out. Um, and of course, you'll have to make additional production rates off the new mowers because they might not mow as fast or during the summertime, um, they might get bogged down more for, with the thicker St. Augustine grass. So there's a few variables, so new production rates are gonna have to be made. But overall, my goal is to have everything in line and be ready for when they release those mowers. So that way, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not diving into something new and, um, you know, having to spend all this money on electric mowers, whether, and, and not knowing whether this business model may or may not work. So I'm testing it out first. Um, this, uh, I, I got this from listening to Mike Andes from Augusta Lawn Care. I listen to a lot of things on his channel and, uh, it's, it's made a lot of sense. Uh, so far with a 30 inch mower, X mark mower, and that's what I'll be using on today all day. It's just a 30 inch mower and I'm just further testing to make sure that the production rates line up, that we're making what we need to make, that we're hitting our targeted goal of $80 per labor hour. Uh, so that's why I like Mondays because I get to really get the hands-on test this and to make sure that when I put a guy in place of me here that everything's set up and I'm setting him up for success and putting him in a position to where he can make a lot of money for himself and um, you know become a good asset to green life as a whole so uh, we're gonna keep running through this route uh, it should be a pretty easy day and then uh, we're gonna go get this new work truck registered which spoiler alert is a ford ranger uh, i'll be posting videos later 
on building this truck out, but this is gonna be our mow and go unit that we use for running these 30 inch mowers. And we're also gonna have it set up to where we're gonna have all electric hand equipment, weed eaters, edgers, blowers, and those are gonna have custom made toolboxes to sit on the bed railings of the truck. So it's gonna be super cool. Um, I'm really pumped to start working on that. We're actually gonna start ordering everything this week, and then I'll put a video together of how we do the entire build and kinda of keep you guys up to date. So we're gonna have um, you know, all, all electric hand equipment on that setup, a propane 30 inch mower on there, and then once those, once the market releases a good 30 inch electric mower, I'll swap that mower and we'll have a full electric setup out of a Ford Ranger. I'm pumped, it's gonna be sweet. Y'all can hate if you wanna hate, but the Ford Ranger is gonna get the job done and it's gonna be a cool little mowing unit. Our mascot's a gnome, so putting gnomes on a Ford Ranger, I think, is fucking perfect. Like, what other vehicle would a gnome be driving? A damn Ford Ranger. <laughs> so stay tuned, guys. Let's see how this day goes. I gotta get the, get the DMV to get that registered first before I can even get that thing started. So uh, let's get to it and get some work done. So guys, on those last two that I just did, um, the last two time lasts, the first one, we actually purchased that account from a, another local landscaper and uh, they were looking to get out of the area and we were actually looking to grow in the area. So it worked out really well. We've been taking care of them for probably about six months or so now. And then uh, the neighbor right across the street on that corner lot, on the corner lot that you guys saw there, uh, she came out and uh, started talking to me. She's like, you know, my lawn care provider is very unreliable. I don't know when he's gonna be showing up. He's super inconsistent. And he also has been doing everything that he's supposed to when he does show up. And overall, this lady came out and her, her opening line was, you know, well, 
I know your service schedule better than I know my own. And, you know, it took me, I, I thought about that later on and just to realize like how inconsistent lawn care service providers can be. And it is enough for clients to leave. Like you have to be consistent with the services that you offer. If you're not, they'll go and find someone else who is. In this case, that was us. You know, we're there every Monday between 9.30 to 10.45. You know, we're, we're super consistent. She always sees our truck up front. And she's in that, and that was the main reason why she wanted to sign up and, you know, get a quote from us. I know we were more expensive than our last provider as well, but the fact that we're able to, you know, provide a consistent service for her neighbor and she noticed that over time, like that stuff builds value. And like when you go to charge a higher price or a premium, it then puts, you know, reason behind your prices and it creates that value for the customer. I was able to solve a problem for her. You know, she didn't have a consistent service provider and she is willing to pay more money in order to get that. And now she hired us on and she does have a consistent service provider. So just think about that. You know, even when you think people might not be watching, there's always someone watching. Like there's someone who's gonna see you out working and they're gonna make an opinion of you. And you wanna make sure when they do that and what they're seeing when they see your company, your guys in uniforms, your trucks and trailers with logo and you know everything looks professional, they make an instant opinion right then. You wanna make sure that when they see that, when they get that first impression from you, that it leaves a lasting impact in a positive way. And uh, we were able to do that. And it's not like I have a super fancy setup. I just have a couple logos on my truck and trailer, but we were also very consistent and the neighbor's yard would always look good and was taken care of. So just something to think about next time you guys are thinking of like, you know, maybe not doing that extra detail work or uh, skipping this person's yard, putting them on for tomorrow. You just, you don't know what you're going to be giving up by deviating from your dedications from the things that you're committed to when running this kind of business so we're going to keep making our way through um i still have to go to the dmv that'll be coming here shortly uh, to go renew the tag registrations and also get the new ranger registered so i'm going to get back to it and keep cutting these yards So I went and um, I got out of the DMV. I wasn't able to get all the registrations done. Lo and behold, when I go to get the Ford Ranger registered, I had an unpaid red light ticket from a camera, one of those red light cameras. Uh, I, I got it while we we're moving properties and I completely forgot about it. So a little bit of a speed bump, nothing uh, you know that can't be fixed. So I'll be going over to uh, the clerk of courts tomorrow to get that paid up. And I gotta make another appointment to go and finish my registrations for the uh, that Ford Ranger there. Uh, so once that is a go, then I'll be able to start commuting back and forth. I did manage to speak with a uh, toolbox or metalworks company where they can make custom fabrications and uh, they're going to whip us up a design, ship us all the material and then I'm going to have our local welder John Parvin 
go and put this thing together for us. So I'm super pumped uh, to see what they come up with on the designs, the spec, and also how much it's gonna cost. Um, so getting custom works obviously gonna be more expensive, uh, but hopefully since we're just getting it mailed in a kit, we can make that uh, pretty economical. And then uh, whenever we get these trucks in the future again, we'll already know exactly what we need and it will help streamline this process. So this first one, we're gonna have some kinks to figure out uh, and I gotta work through how we're gonna fabricate the setup and the dimensions, the layout on the Ford Ranger since we're limited to the amount of space and room. It's only like a six foot bed and uh, the, from the top of the bed to the top of the cab is only like 23, 24 inches. So we gotta, I want to come up with a design that A, is gonna be practical to do everything we needed to do and B, make sure it looks somewhat uh, aesthetically appealing for when you're looking at it. I, I wanna make sure it's a nice clean box that it looks professional on the trucks and then we'll have a model that we can replicate and use that either on like the Ford Rangers like we're doing now or on a larger full-size truck or an eight-foot bed. Just take the same concept and, you know, extend the, uh, the dimensions on it and uh, add a little more material. So we'll have some versatility with it. But overall, these boxes are going to be able to protect our electric equipment, keep them out of the weather, and um, you know, make sure that those we get the full life out of those batteries and out of those pieces of equipment because uh, it all adds up pretty quick. So you want to protect the things that you're spending your money on and using electric equipment definitely has a different set of loopholes and things you have to work through in order to protect the equipment, make it last, but also have it be set up in a way to where it increases your efficiency from for how you want run on your day to day. So those are three main things I'm trying to get this toolbox to match up on. We're getting the ramp rack ordered this week, so um, we'll probably put that on next week. And then once we get the toolbox situated, I'll be looking into uh, putting on an on-grid charging system. So we're gonna put a solar panel on the roof and then we're gonna have uh, another auxiliary charging by hooking up to the alternator. So while the truck's running, it'll be charging the battery, which is what will charge our equipment. And then when it's not running, that will at least get a trickle charge from the solar panels. I came across a company who's now selling solar panels that get upwards of 600, um, 600 watts per panel. So I'm looking to put one of those on there uh, I think that's the most efficient solar panels that they have out right now are the 600. So I was super pumped to see something and that kind of watt range. So I got to further explore what the shipping is going to be. They're made overseas. You can't get them, you know, in in the U.S., which I think is pretty common with uh, the solar panels any, anyways. And then we got to hook up our battery system and the inverter and how we're going to run the charger everything's going to be essentially in the cab of the ford ranger and granted this is a single cab or a regular cab so we're pretty tight in space but i'm i'm pretty confident we can make it work and come with this come up with a system that'll work for all you guys too um and space won't be a factor you know if we we do this right we'll be able to show you guys how to do this and it'll work for any truck um, as long as you follow, you know, the, the, how, how we did the install. So uh, I'll, I'll include all the products and everything that we use on those videos, the website, so that way you guys know where to go. Um, and that way, if you want to make one yourself, you can. So um, I got one last stop to do. I don't have Wi-Fi at my house or even a cell phone connection. So on my commute home from work, I always find a McDonald's, a Panera, a Starbucks, uh, whenever I have computer work and I go and soak up some Wi-Fi, knock out my computer work for my business. So that's my next stop, get some Wi-Fi, knock out some business stuff to help take care of our clients. We got some estimates I got to send out and then we have, I have a, a few more clients I have to follow up with regards to billing and a little bit of uh, content to like publish and put out there. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching my first episode of The Daily Grind. There's gonna be more like this. If you've enjoyed it, if you feel like you've gotten some value out of this, 
please click the uh, subscribe button, hit the bell, subscribe to this channel, and I'll keep this stuff coming for you guys.